The White Sox are going to the World Series in 1919. Their opponent, the Cincinnati Reds, are obviously worse, and the Sox are favored by 5-1 to one odds. But star pitcher Eddie Sigoat hits the Reds' leadoff man, and the series totally falls apart for the Sox. What happened? It turns out the Sox were paid money to fail. Eight players were paid between 15000 and 25000 to intentionally fail in the World Series. It was the actions of just a few people affiliated with the Sox, Sakot and Burns to name a few, that shaped the view of the Sox, the dirty cheaters that we think of them as today. Burns and Comiskey's finger pointing did that. The pressure from the media made Comiskey crumble and suspend the players, and a tragic combination of media coverage and public opinion put a blemish on the Sox forever. Be it a curse or a bad reputation, the Sox will never be the same. A basic overview of what happened with the Sox is that eight players in the 1919 World Series were paid by gamblers to intentionally fail. Fifteen, between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars were paid to the White Sox so they could throw it. They ended up getting indicted, and they ended up uh, being banned from baseball forever. It was initially an indefinite ban, but it turned out that they were banned forever. The Sox quickly turned the series into a mess. Future would have been Hall of Famer Joe Jackson totally bombed it. He even admitted to intentionally tapping the ball instead of hitting it hard. Pitcher Eddie Sakot, uh hit the Reds' leadoff man. First pitch of the series. Chick Gandel intentionally got caught stealing. Stuff like that. Pitchers generally just tried to throw it right down the middle for the batters to get hits, and they just really bombed it on purpose. This is not to say that the Sox are not talented. They feature three future Hall of Famers, and to say nothing of Sukkot and Jackson, who would have been Hall of Famers had they not uh, been in the 1919 conspiracy. As you know, you can't be in the Hall of Fame if you participated in a thing like the 1919 World Series scandal. The future Hall of Famers that I mentioned before were named Ray Schalk, Red Faber, and Eddie Collins. Red Faber was actually supposed to pitch in one of the games, but he was injured, and so therefore one of the eight men participating in the scandal went out there and totally bombed it instead of Red Faber being out there to win a game. It was clear as day that Sakot and Jackson were not themselves during the series. They were totally bombing it, and it wasn't like Jackson or Sakot to perform like they did in the awful, awful way they did. And it wasn't a postseason cold mark either. They had both been outstanding during the previous postseason series, so people knew that something was up. The band Black Sox consisted of Fred McMullen, Joe Shoeless Joe Jackson, Oscar Felsch, George Weaver, C.P. Williams, who not many people knew about because he wasn't very good, so he didn't really participate that much in the scandal. Didn't get paid that much either. And Eddie Sakot. When we think of what the Sox did, we think of, oh my goodness, totally unheard of, but was it that way? Well, no. The thing is, what they did wasn't that uncommon. Throwing games, that wasn't a big deal back then. In fact, 1917, Sox...
bought four games from the Detroit Tigers. Strange things started happening following the series. The media immediately picked up on the fact that the Sox had been doing something fishy throughout the series and started interviewing the manager Charles Comiskey of the Sox. Comiskey immediately denied everything and he said that even if they were true, the accusations, he said he would sever all relations with the Sox, including the banning them from the organization if the accusations ever came through. And boy, did they. As he promised, when the reports came through, he released all players and, yes, severed all relations with the players. Following the court hearings, they weren't immediately banned. They were put on what's called indefinite suspension. That was the following year, though after the next year's playoffs. So, the Sox still had a very strong core of players. They still had Joe Jackson. They still had Eddie Sicote. Remember, the court hearings happened after the following year's playoffs. And they were contending for another playoff spot when star pitcher Eddie Sicote admitted to the whole thing. And Sicote's admitting of conspiracy marked one of the greatest White Sox meltdowns. Even with three Hall of Famers, Joe Jackson and Eddie Sicote, the Sox didn't see a postseason that year. Remember, the Sox were still so talented back then. And the manager, Charles Comiskey, he threw all of that away when he suspended them. The White Sox could have redeemed themselves by winning World Series, say after that awful, awful 1919 World Series, but Comiskey decided to tear it all down because he was getting crumbled by the media. He sacrificed his best roster for a quote-unquote moral reason, even though the Sox might have not been totally to blame. Where were the gamblers in all this? Bill Burns, the man who testified in court, was twisting the story in favor of the gamblers, and so was Charles Comiskey, the manager. They benefited from the Sox being guilty, so why were they twisting it in the gamblers' favor? Think about that. That's why I'm a firm believer that the gamblers bear more responsibility than the players for the 1919 World Series scandal. Victory!